Okay. So let's start with uh, talking about angles. So uh, when you're talking about angles, there's two units of measurement that we use. The most standard one that you guys probably are familiar with is degrees. And there are 360 degrees in a circle. So uh, degrees can be uh, broken into two smaller units called minutes and seconds. So there are 60 minutes in one degree and uh, 60 seconds in each minute. So that means that in each degree, there's 60 times 60 or 3,600 seconds. Uh, the other unit we use uh, to describe degrees uh, is radians. It's very commonly used in uh, calculus too. So uh, radians, basically pi is equal to 180 degrees. So a, whole, a full circle, uh, which is usually 360 degrees, would be called uh, two pi radians. So let's do some quick conversions here. So if we're looking for how many degrees are in pi over three radians, well, one degree of, uh, I mean, one radian, pi radians, what am I saying, pi radians, is equal to 180 degrees. So pi over 3 radians is equal to 180 degrees over 3, which is 60 degrees. And let's say we're trying to convert uh, 135 degrees uh, to radians. Well, we can just uh, multiply by the conversion factor. Uh, 135 radians, I mean, uh, sorry, 135 degrees times pi radians per 180 degrees. So if you divide this by 45, you get three. Divide this by 45, you get four. So it's equal to three pi over four radians. So yeah, that's those are the basically the conversions between radians and degrees. So let's convert 185 over nine degrees into minutes and seconds. So 185 over nine is the same thing as uh, 20 and five nines. So you have 20 and five nines degrees. So if we have five ninths of a degree and each, uh, each degree is equal to 60 minutes, uh, then basically we can say that we can convert this. So then we have 300 over nine, uh, which is equal to, 33.3 three repeating minutes. So now we have here, this is one third. We have one third of a one third of a minute, and we want to convert a third of a minute to seconds. Well, uh, there are 60 seconds in a minute. So basically we do one third times one third times 60 is equal to 20. So we have 20 seconds here. So, uh, so what we have is 20 and five ninths degrees is the same thing as 20 degrees. Uh, what is this? 33 minutes and 20 seconds. So I don't have any questions so far. Okay. So looks like we're good. Let's go over some um, terminology with angles. So uh, I think I should know 90 degree angles are called right angles. And when you have two lines that form a right angle, uh, most commonly they're called perpendicular lines. 
but another term used is orthogonal. So now, uh, yeah, just good to know. Acute angles are angles that are less than 90 degrees. Obtuse angles are between 90 and 180 degrees. And any angles over 180 degrees are called reflex angles. So uh, when you have a pairs of angles and they add up to 90 degrees, these are called uh, complementary angles. And then when you have a pair of angles that add up to 180 degrees, they're called supplementary angles. And uh, vertical angles are the angles that are opposite uh, from a line intersection. So this, these two are vertical angles and these two are vertical angles. And basically vertical angles, uh, as you can probably tell just from looking, uh, they're equivalent. Okay. So when you have uh, parallel lines and traversals, there are also uh, other sets of congruent angles. Congruent just means they're the same. So uh, basically, you have the pair of parallel lines here. These two lines are parallel, and then you have one line cutting through both of them. This is called the this is called the traversal. So when you have parallel lines and traversal, there are only two different angles within all these eight angles. Let's say we have A here. A and E are congruent because they're on the same side of each of the, they're on the same side of uh, the parallel lines and the traversal. So they're both on like the upper left of this. So they're the same. Well, A and C are the same because they're vertical angles. And then E and G are also the same. So then you can say A, angle A, angle C, angle E, angle G are all the same. And uh, there, this is the terminology they use, like for uh, A and G, they're called alternate exterior angles because they're on the uh, exterior, exterior of the parallel lines and they're on the opposite side. But honestly, it's not too important to know what they're called. If, uh, if you can tell which ones look the same, uh, and you should be good. Then on the other hand, we have uh, B and D are the same because they're vertical angles. And then F and H are also the same as B and D. So, yeah, uh, usually with this, you're able, you can tell uh, what angles are the same by kind of looking at them. You can try to remember that angles on like the same court on the same side of a traversal, like this one and this one, that are also on the same side of each parallel line, they will be the same. But when I do these, I usually don't think about it too much. It should be pretty intuitive. So we can use this to prove why the sum of the angles of a triangle are 180 degrees, right? So let's say we have a triangle here. We have triangle ABC, then we have AB is parallel to uh, this line L. So uh, if we look at this angle and this angle, well, they have to be the same because they're, because uh, we can treat this line here as a traversal of the two parallel lines a b and line l so that makes uh these alternate interior angles and you can kind of see they look like they're the same yeah so these two angles here they're equivalent and on the same note you can say that this angle is the same as angle beta here and this one they're also now you notice that this this is gamma, gamma plus alpha plus beta is equal to 180 degrees. But on the other hand, uh, alpha here 
on the top here is the same as the alpha down here and the beta here is the same as the beta down here. So that means that uh, this angle, uh, which is angle ACB, gamma is equal to angle CAB plus angle CBA, which are uh, those two angles or the two down here. So that's why the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. This isn't a, it's not a rigorous proof, but it's a pretty cool thing you can figure out just by drawing it. Well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so on the same, like, on the same wavelength, we can uh, talk about this theorem called the exterior angle theorem. So if you have this angle, let's say this theta here on the outside of a triangle, after you extend the lines of another triangle, it's equal to the sum of the other two angles, uh, which are alpha and beta here on the triangle. So uh, to prove this, we just notice that alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to 180 degrees. But since uh, gamma and theta are supplementary angles, because uh, they form a line, then this is also 180 degrees. So this means that uh, alpha plus beta is equal to theta. And that's the exterior angle theorem. Yeah, when we're talking about angles, people like to use Greek letters because, I don't know, it looks kind of cool. And it makes you look smarter too. So, yeah. So let's talk about the lines you have within a circle. So the basics, uh, you'd have a line from the center to the outside of the circle. This line is called a radius. And uh, when you extend the radius to the other side of the circle, you have a diameter. So this, so the diameter is two times the radius. So, uh, so some more unfamiliar terms, a line intersecting a circle in two places is called a secant. So like uh, the orange line here intersects here and here, so it's a secant. Uh, and the part of the secant that's contained within the circle is called a chord. Yeah, but if a line intersects a circle at only a single point, which means it's outside of the circle, it's called a tangent. So uh, the point at which uh, it intersects the circle is called a point of tangency. And yeah, so uh, tangents, when something is tangent to something else, basically just means it's, it's touching the edge of a circle. An arc is just uh, a length of the side. And the full, uh, the full length of, like the perimeter of the circle is called a circle. Uh, some basic equations that you guys probably already know. But the circumference of a circle is calculated as 2 pi r, where r is the radius. And the area is uh, pi r squared, and r is still the radius. So here's an interesting proof of uh, the area of a circle equation. So let's say we have a circle here, and we split it into like these little uh, slices, which are called sectors. Well, what happens is we arrange this sectors to form like a sort of a sort of parallelogram looking thing. And this, they'll have these like curved edges here at the end, but the smaller you cut these slices or these sectors, uh, the less bumpy it becomes. So in this example, let's say we have this parallelogram here, we formed we're rearranging the sectors in here to form this. Well, uh, we can just, well, area of parallel, uh, parallelogram is just the base length times the height. So the height is this, and then the base is this. Well, 
this height is actually just the radius of the original circle. So, we, so they label it here. Basically, they took the end of this sector and they moved it to the other side to make it look like a rectangle. So we can just look at this. We have a radius here, and then we have these edges of the circle at the top. Well, actually, if you notice that the edge here, this is just half of the circumference. The other half is on the bottom. So, well, the area to find, uh, the formula to find the area of a rectangle is, well, the side length times the side length. So you have r times half of the circumference. Well, the circumference is just uh, 2 pi r. And if we simplify this, we get pi r squared. So yeah, that's an interesting way that you can kind of figure out the area. I thought that was interesting. OK, so let's do some examples. The area of a circle is 16. What is the circumference of a circle? Area of a circle equation is pi r squared. So we just write pi r squared is equal to 16. r squared equals uh, 16 over pi. We take a square root and we get r is equal to 4 over root pi. But uh, we don't like having radicals or square roots in the denominator. So we rationalize this by multiplying the top and bottom by square root of pi. So then we get 4 root pi over pi. So if we want the circumference, basically, uh, that's 2 times pi times the radius. So we do here is we multiply this 4 root pi over pi by 2 and then by pi. So we cancel out the pi's and we get the circumference would be Wait, can you tell me the formula to find the circumference again? Yeah, circumference is uh, 2 times pi times the radius. Or if you, you can, can other people write pi d, where d is the diameter, because three times the radius is the same as the diameter. How did you do that from finding the area? Did you just find a side length or something? Uh, so yeah, so we knew that we know area is pi r squared, right? Yeah. So that's the, that's the equation. So uh, using this information, we can solve for the radius. So we divide by pi, and then we take a square root. Then we square root both sides. So then we get r is equal to 4 over root pi. Yeah. And then after you have this, you can plug it into the circumference equation. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, that does. So okay. two times. Uh, so 2 times 3.14 times uh, 4 over four root pi. Yeah. Yeah. Usually when we're solving these equations, you don't need to uh, change it into a decimal. You can leave it. Well, in fact, I actually know 45 digits of pi by memory, but that's not relevant, so let's continue. Okay. <laughs> What's the maximum area that can be enclosed by 12 feet of fencing? Well, when you're creating a fence and you want to say you want to enclose the maximum amount of area, I don't know if this is, uh, it's hard to actually prove this, but if you think about it, it's kind of makes sense. You want to try to create a circle because it maximizes the area. Like, cause if you have like folds and stuff inside, then the area will decrease. So a circle maximizes the area. So if you have 12 feet of fencing, that's fencing would be the circumference. So we just say 12 equals pi r. And then we can solve for r. r is equal to 12 over 2 pi, which is equal to 6 over pi. And now they want the maximum area. So we do the area equation. We do pi times r squared, which is pi times 6 over pi squared, which is uh, when you simplify gives us 36 over pi. OK. 
All right, so. Let's do another example here. So a piece of wire 72 centimeters long is cut into two equal pieces and each is formed into a circle. What is the sum of the areas of the circle? Well, if you have a 72 centimeter long and it's cut into two equal pieces, then they're both going to be 36 centimeters. So at this point, we do the same thing we did for the last problem. We have the circumference. We want to solve for the radius. We say 36 equals 2 pi times r. And then uh, you divide by 2 pi. So r equals 36 over 2 pi is equal to 18 over pi. So then the area of uh, a circle with this radius is pi r squared, which is equal to pi times 18 over pi squared. Uh, 18 squared is 324, and then we have a pi over pi squared, so uh, this is the area. However, remember it's asking for both of the circles. We have two of these, so don't forget to multiply by 2 to give 648 over pi. Does that make sense? Okay. So, Wait, so when you multiply by 2, doesn't pi get multiplied by 2 on both sides? Uh, where are you talking about multiplying by 2? Are Here? you just multiplying the numerator? or Yeah. You so when you have a fraction and then you multiply a fraction like by a constant, which is 2 here, it's, you just multiply the numerator. It doesn't multiply. Uh yeah, I thought you were trying to multiply both sides. This one sounds a bit more interesting. Kenjin is standing on the lawn and wearing a circular sombrero with a radius of three feet. Unfortunately, the hat blocks the sunlight so effectively that the grass directly underneath it dies instantly. If she walks, I don't know, I didn't change this. If the girl walks in a circle of radius five feet, what area of dead grass will result? So let's, let's draw a picture here. So they're walking in a circle. Man, it's so hard to draw a circle. Uh, okay, whatever. So she's walking in a circle. Let's say this radius here is five feet. And the sombrero has a radius of three feet. So let's draw a sombrero here. Aish. <laughs> okay, good enough. Let's say this is the center of the circle. <laughs> and then the radius here would be three feet. So they're asking for what area of dead grass will result. So anyone have an idea of how we can solve this? So this circle is going to walk all the way around the, this larger circle. Can we find the sum circumference, or I mean the area, and then say that's the grass? Uh, yeah. So uh, we, we have to do some areas here, but we actually have to do two areas here. Because what happens is we'll carve out a outer circle and an inner circle. This isn't clear when we let me draw. When we walk in a circle here, this outer this is so hard. This outer sombrero, the outside of sombrero would draw this outer circle. And then the inside of a sombrero would draw this little circle. I'm kind of proud of this drawing, not going to lie, but okay. So uh, the radius of the outer circle here would be from the center to the five, which is the radius of the circle she's walking, plus the radius of her sombrero, which is three. So 
the, the radius of the outer circle is uh, oops not uh, is five plus three. So does everyone see this? Because uh, I want to make this clear. Because we we established uh, this this radius here as five because that's the radius that they're walking, and then yeah. this, the sombrero stretches out for three more. So that's why we have an uh, outer radius of five plus three, which is eight. Okay, so does anyone know how we can find the inner radius of this smaller circle that doesn't get covered? Isn't that the inner radius? Yeah, so this radius is five, right? We want this smaller radius here. Oh, okay. That's... And this is cut out by the sombrero. It's five minus three equals two. Yeah, so it's the radius that she's regularly walking minus the radius of the sombrero. So we have five minus three, which is two. So now we have two, two radii, which is the plural of radius. And then we can do the area of the outer circle minus the area of the inner circle. So then we get pi times uh, r squared, but this is the outer r, a squared minus i times the inner one. So you know, minus pi times two squared. Equal to 64 pi minus four pi, which is 60 pi, and that's our answer. So, does anyone have any questions? Does it make sense? Uh, you only subtract with core, you don't subtract with pi. And so we have uh, 64 pi, Minus four pi. So, uh, I'm sorry. What? I didn't hear that. Yeah, doesn't the pi and pi cancel out or something? Uh, no. Uh, when you're subtracting, uh, if you're dividing, yes, they'd cancel out. But when you're subtracting, uh, 64 pi, and then you subtract four pi from the 64 pi, you still have 60 pi left. Isn't so pi minus zero? Yeah, but uh, it's 64 times pi minus four times pi. So okay. it's not like, these are like connected in a way. Okay. So if, okay, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Okay, this one's, this one's kind of hard, but let's see if anyone has an idea. Uh, in the circle to the right, circle P, uh, B is tangent to circle A at X. So it just means it's touching circle A. Circle A is the big circle at this point X. And then circle C is tangent to circle A at Y. And circles uh, B and C are tangent to each other. So they're touching. If AB, so let's label this here, AB is equal to six. AC is equal to five. And BC is equal to nine. We want to find what is AX? So does anyone notice anything before I give some hint? Um, I noticed that, um, AB is longer than AC. Yes, AB is longer than AC. So let's let's talk about CB. Does anyone notice anything about line CB here with the length nine? It's longer than both. A, B, and A, C. Is it congruent to Y, X? I mean, something like yeah. that. Uh, it, it is not congruent to Y, X, and it is, uh, it is longer than A, C, and A, B, but here is something. 
I mean parallel or something. Oh, it is parallel, actually. I mean, sorry, it's not parallel because if it were parallel, uh, AC and AB would be the same. But uh, not, it's not in this case. But if you notice something interesting, if you look at this point to this point, what is this line from, from, from point C to the, where the two circles are touching? It's the radius of um, circle C. Yeah. So we have, so this is the radius of circle C. And similarly, from B to this point, it would be the radius of circle B. Does everyone see this? Uh, CB is the sum of uh, circle C's radius and circle B's radius. So that's, that's the trick here. So we have radius of circle C plus radius of circle B is equal to 9. And then, yeah, so for our next step, we look at what we're looking for, AX here. What is AX? Can we try and find? We're trying to find AX. So notice something about AX. What is it? What is AX? It's a radius. Yes, the radius of A. So AX is just the radius of circle A. So now let's do something uh, interesting here. So let's look at what they give us. So they give us uh, AC and they give us, uh, they give us, what else? They give us AB. So you'll notice that uh, we can set up a very interesting equation here. So let's say AX is equal to AB plus BX. You guys see this? So this, this whole radius AX is equal to AB and then plus BX. Yeah. And then on the same note, we can write AY is equal to AC plus CY. Because we have, uh, yeah, that's the two parts of the radius of circle A, a here. So now, a -Y, hmm? uh, a, yeah. a Y is A C plus C Y. So let me, A C is here and then C Y is here. So, yeah. Uh, well, let's see what we know. We know A C and we know A B. Sorry, AC equals five, AB equals six. You can rewrite this as AX equals six plus BX and AY is equal to five plus CY. Now, let's go back and look at BX and CY. So, anyone notice anything about these two segments? The same length. Uh, they're just, yeah, they're, they're basically not. No, they're not the same length, but they are both the radi uh, the radius of the smaller circle. Anyone notice this? Because CY extends from the center of this circle to the end of the circle, and BX extends from the center of this circle to the edge of this circle. So these are both radii and if you remember we did a little bit of work up here with uh, those radii so uh, we did the radius of c plus the radius of b equals nine well now we see that the radius of c is the same thing as cy and the radius of ang uh, circle b is bx so yeah, so let's let's write it like that. Let's say AX. Oops, not AX. 
Px plus Cy is equal to nine. Is everyone following so far? I went kind of went a little fast there, but yeah. Understand how we got here? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are we looking for? We're looking for AX. Well, let's look at what we have here. We have AX and AY, and these are both radii of the larger circle, which is circle A. So they're the same. So AX is equal to AY. And we're just looking for AX, which is the same as AY. So Hans, we can do something interesting right here. We can add these two equations here. I'm running out of space, but and AX plus AY, since AX is the same as uh, AY, we can just call this two AX is equal to eleven plus BX plus CY. So does anyone see what the final step here is? We have we know something already to solve this equation. If not, I'll point it out here. So BX plus CY equals nine. Yeah. So we found out earlier that BX plus CY equals nine. And here we have a BX plus CY in our equation. So let's plug it in. We have two AX is equal to eleven plus nine. 2ax is equal to 20, and that leaves us with ax is equal to 10. And that is our answer. The radius of this outer circle here is 10. Yeah, so this question is pretty difficult, I think, but uh, it takes a lot, of it. a lot of things, uh, like noticing that this CB is the sum of the two radii, that comes with practice. But the, the math behind it is not that hard. You just have to try to notice like, if you can break things down a bit. So here, we broke this into two radii here. And that's how we measure. Let's talk about sectors and arcs. So arcs, uh, when people are talking about arcs, they either designate it by the arc length, which is like this length right here, or they talk about uh, the central angle, which is theta here. So we can use uh, proportions to find the arc length of the sector area. So for example, if we had like, uh, let's say this angle was 45 degrees, well, we know a total circle is uh, 360 degrees. So, this sector is only 45 over 360 of the circle. So that's just one eighth of the circle. So if we wanted to find the sector length, what we could do is we could find the circumference times one eighth. And if we wanted to find the area of this sector, we could do pi r squared times one eighth. So here are the official equations, but try not to memorize them. I think it's easier just to understand how we're getting here. So let's do an example here. A circle with radius four, so let's just draw this. Yeah. A circle with radius four has a sector area of four pi. So what is the measure of the central angle? So what is the measure of this angle here? And what is the length of the arc subtended by this central angle? So subtended is just a fancy word for what it encompasses. So this central angle encompasses from here to here, this arc length. Well, let's see what information we have here. So we have the radius. We have radius is four, and then they give you an area of a sector, so it's four pi. Well, we can find the area of the entire circle here using radius is, uh, wait, why did I write radius is pi? I meant radius is four. So then the area of this whole circle is 
pi r squared is equal to 16 pi. And then now we notice that this sector has area of 4 pi. So we have 4 pi is the sector, and then the whole circle is 16 pi. What this tells us is that the sector is actually one fourth of the total circle. And if it's one fourth of the total circle, does anyone know how many degrees that would correspond to? Forty-five. Close, but off mm -hmm. by a factor of two. So it's like ninety. It, yeah, it'd be one fourth of the full circle, which is three hundred sixty degrees. It'd be ninety <laughs> degrees. So what length of the arc is uh, measured by the central angle? Subtended Spencer. Okay, so then, well, we know it's one fourth of the full circle at this point. We just do one fourth times the circumference, which is two pi r. And here we get pi r over two. And we know the radius is four. Then we plug in the radius, so pi times four over two. So that gives us two pi. So that's the length of the arc. We have the angle and the arc length. Where did you get pi r over two? Isn't it two times pi times r? Yeah, so you two times pi times r, but we have a one fourth on the outside. So then you do two divided by four here, and that's one half. That's why there's a two on the bottom here. So, yeah. So yeah, we just multiply these two terms together. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Let's do another one. A sector of a circle has has area 30 pi. So let's draw this again. Let's draw this. This has area 30 pi. Given that the whole area has, uh, the whole circle has area 100 pi, find the measure of this central angle. So now we notice that the whole, uh, the whole circle has area of 100 pi, and we have 30 pi of it. So that means we have 30 pi over 100 pi, which is, um, we have 3 tenths of the total circle. Does everyone see this? Basically, we just did uh, the sector area over the total area. Well, we want to find the measure of the central angle. So we do 3 tenths times the measure of an entire circle, which would be 360 degrees. And then we just do this divided by 10 here. So get rid of the 0, get rid of the 10. 3 times 36, which is equal to 108 degrees. Does that make sense? Okay, this one's a bit more challenging, but let's see what they let's see what it is. So a sector of a circle has okay, a sector of a circle has area ten pi. So that's the area. If it subtends an arc length of two pi, so what this is saying is this arc length from here to here is two pi. What is the measure of this central angle? So this time they don't give us the radius or the total circumference or the total area. So that should tell us that we need to do some algebra here to try to find it. So let's say, let's call the radius, let's call it R. 
so we can, what we can do here is set up a proportion because we have two parts here. So we have a, a arc length, which is part of the circumference. Then we have the sector area, which is part of the area, of the total area. So basically, uh, we can, these two parts, we can set up a proportion to try to find uh, what the radius is. So it's, uh, try to follow along here. So I'm just going to say 10 pi over, oops, 10 pi over pi r squared is equal to 2 pi over 2 pi r. So just to explain this a little bit, what we're saying is that uh, this area of the sector, uh, the ratio of the area of the sector to the area of the total circle is equal to the ratio of this arc length as is to the circumference of the entire circle. So that, so does that make sense, kind of? So it's like part over a whole. I should make that. Yeah. So that's, that's how we set this proportion. And then uh, now we can try to simplify this, right? So let's divide. Let's get rid of the pi's here. So we have 10 over r squared. Let's get rid of the two pi's here. 1 over r. So that tells us that uh, r is equal to 10. And if this, uh, and if we wanted to check this, we could. So let's just do it. So, but it says r squared. Oh, yes. It does. It. I, I skipped some steps here. I probably should show it. So we can cross multiply here, right? We can multiply these. We can say 10r is equal to r squared. And then we divide both sides by r. So then we get 10 equals r. Does that make sense how we got here from this? Yeah. OK. I just skipped this step. So sorry. I should not do that. OK. Uh, and then. Now let's look at our question. What is the measure of the central angle? Well, now we have the radius. So this problem becomes a lot easier. So let's say if the radius is, uh, radius is 10, the area of the total thing will be pi r squared, which is equal to uh, 10 squared times pi, which is equal to 100 pi. And the sector has area of 10 pi. So that means we have 10 pi over 100 pi of the total circle, which is one tenth of the total circle. And as a full circle has 360 degrees, that tells us that the central angle is 36 degrees. This one had quite a few steps. Anyone want any clarifications? If not, then, okay, I'll move on. All right, so let's talk about some more, more complex equations. So this, this looks intimidating. This isn't really relevant, but I just thought this was an interesting fun fact. You can, uh, about a, different circles and tangents. So if you have three circles in a plane, so we have a circle here, we have a circle here, and a circle here. And uh, none of them is completely within one of the other ones. The intersection points of each pairs of external tangent lines are collinear, so that's, that's a mouthful. So what they're saying is, for each pair of circles, we draw a line that touches both of the circles, right? So this red line here, this red line here, they're the two lines that touch these circles. If you extend these lines, they'll intersect at a point over here. And then the same with the green lines. The green lines are where these two circles, the circle and this circle, those are their tangent lines. They intersect at a point here. And you do the same with uh, these last pairs of circles. And they intersect at a point here. And it's interesting to notice that all three of these points of intersection, they all lie on the same line. 
And that's not really relevant to this competition math thing, but I just thought that was super interesting. <laughs> All right, so let's get into some things that you guys might not know about angles. So if you have an angle formed by two chords with a common endpoint, this angle, well, it's called an inscribed angle. And the measure of the angle is one half of the arc that it encompasses. So what they're saying is this angle here, uh, ABC, uh, if this is X, uh, then this arc here, the number of degrees in this arc is twice of this measure here. So it would be X squared? No, it'd be two X, twice, not, not squared. Oh, so, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's... Do an example here. Uh, let me clear that. Oh, actually, not yet. So here's a corollary, which means a related theorem we can find out here. Any two inscribed angles which uh, uh, subtend to the same arc must be equal. So we can look at this because let's say this arc here, CD, let's say arc CD, let's give it degree measure uh, alpha. So what does that make angle CAD? Well, since uh, CAD is an inscribed angle, you'll notice that this angle should be alpha over two. And the same thing with uh, angle CBD, CBD. Since it also uh, subtends to the same arc length here, which is alpha, it's also A over 2. So that's why uh, these two angles here, this is angle A, this is angle A, angle B. Angle A is equal to angle B. And then uh, you can also prove that angle C here is equal to angle D because Area, I mean, not the area, the, the sum of the angles of a triangle out of 180, right? So we know these two are the same. Now we know these two are the same because they're vertical angles. So this angle and this angle must also be. That makes sense? So each side is identical? Uh, in this case, yes. In, uh, you shouldn't. You should, in this case, it is true, but not always. What you have to notice is that they're saying the angles are identical, not the, not the side lengths, but the angles are the same. So. Okay, I got it. Okay, yeah, so this angle, this angle, those are the same, then these two angles are the same. These two angles are the same. So only the angles are the same, not the sides. That's because they're the same two triangles, right? Uh, they're, uh, since they're called similar triangles. They're not, this isn't a proof that they're congruent, which means they're the same, but if they have the same angles, uh, it's something called a similar triangle, which I'll probably talk about tomorrow. But yeah, just for this, for the purpose of this, you just need to know that the angles are the same. So let's, let's do an example here. So find x, which is this angle here. Find x given that angle APD, I mean, sorry, angle APB, which is this angle here. This is 2x and ACD is equal to x, which uh, yeah, we already said, and then uh, angle BC, I mean, not angle, arc BC is equal to X. Well, let's look at what we just learned. If, if uh, there's an inscribed angle that subtends to an arc, well, that means that it's gonna have an equal, it's gonna be one half of the arc measure here. So we have BC here is equal to X. So does anyone see which two angles which two angles subtend to uh, arc BC? Uh, 
They're both inscribed, which means they're inside the circle. A and D. Yeah. So A and D, if you notice, they both open up to arc PC. That means that angle A is X over two and angle D is also X over two. And then let's look at what we're trying to find here. So uh, we're trying to find this slope of, let's look at this angle here, angle DPC. Well, since DPC is a vertical angle from angle APB, APB, it also must be 2x. And that means that this angle here is also x. So this is where you see the similar triangles thing because uh, they both, uh, they, both uh, they both have the same angle measures. So you have x over 2, 2x two and x. Just like last time, like the angles are the same, but the sides aren't? Uh, you can try to, uh, I'm not sure actually if the sides are uh, in, they could be the same, but we can't prove that the side lengths are the same just yet. But it's, a, it's like, you don't know anything about the sides just given the angles. You need some information about lengths to be able to say that the sides are the same. But in this case, we're just looking for an angle, so we don't need to worry about side lengths at all. Well, it's, both of these are triangles, right? And triangles mean that their degrees should add up to 180 degrees. We can say 180 degrees equals x over 2 plus 2x plus x. So basically, you add 1 half x, 2x, and x. That gives you 3.5x is equal to 180 degrees leaves us with x is equal to, uh, comes out to around, around 51.4 degrees. So does everyone understand how we got here? Because, yeah, this one also requires a few steps. Any, any clarifications? No, okay, I'll move on then. Okay, this is another interesting corollary, which is related theorem. Opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral always sum to 180 degrees. So if you know what a cyclic quadrilateral is, basically, if you have a circle, then you have a quad any quadrilateral that touches all four sides. Like if, if the vertices of the quadrilateral touch a circle, are all in the same circle, uh, it's called a cyclic quadrilateral. So what they're saying is an opposite, uh, uh, opposite angle, so like A and C here, or uh, like D and B here, these must add up to uh, 180 degrees. D plus B equals 180, which is the same as A plus B. Uh, the reason for this is because uh, these are all inscribed angles, right? So let's look at angle B here. So angle B, uh, it subtends to this arc here. And angle D here, it subtends to this arc here. So if you notice that the sum of these two arcs is 360 degrees because it's a full circle. And uh, since, uh, since each of these inscribed angles is half of the arc length that it encompasses, then each of them will be uh, one half. So then our total would be 360 degrees divided by two, which is 180 degrees. So that's just interesting to note that when you have a cyclic quadrilateral, opposite angles will always add up to 180 degrees. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about this more this equation. So angles formed by uh, secants or tangents that intersect outside the circle. So in this, in this problem, we have two secants, but it also works with tangents. 
So what it's saying is that angle of B, uh, this angle here, BAC, is equal to BC, which they labeled alpha, minus uh, this, well, this one here, beta, divided by two. So it's like when you have a angle sticking out of a circle, far side arc minus the near side arc uh, divided by two. So easiest way to show this is through an example. Ooh, this one's a little spicy. So you have points A, B, Q, uh, D, and C, these five points here, all lie on the circle. And then the measure of arcs uh, BQ, so let's label this, BQ is 42 degrees, and uh, QD is 38 degrees. Uh, so they want, what is the sum of angles P, let me change the color, P and let's say Q here. So there, there's a way mm, to find some other, we can't directly find angle P uh, using the equation we just found, right? So we can, but we can still write an equation for it. So what we learned was that if you have an outside angle is equal to the outer arc minus, which is arc BD minus the inner arc, which is arc AC uh, divided by two. Does anyone know the, we can find the angle measure of arc BD. BD is just BQ plus QD, uh, QD, which is equal to uh, 42 plus 38. That makes it 80, 80 degrees. So using the equation we just learned, we're saying 80 degrees, minus uh, AC, arc AC, this should be arc two. AC, so this is the equation we just found. Uh, we just, now we just found, we just discussed. So is everyone following so far? Yes. So now let's look at what other angles here we can So uh, remember from earlier, we learned things about, uh, we learned things about inscribed angles. So we have this angle here, angle ABQ here. This angle would be half of BQ because it's inscribed. So this is 21 degree. And then same with angle QCD, which is this one here. This angle here is equal to 38 divided by two. This is 19 degrees. So similarly, uh, we can look at angle Q here. Well, angle Q here, it's, it subtends to arc AC, but we don't know AC yet. So let's just write uh, Q is equal AC over two. So actually there's a special trick here we can do when we have P and Q. And let's see, does anyone notice something we can do with P and Q to maybe get rid of an unknown? This relates to yesterday as well. <laughs> so we have this, we have this. Give it some thought. Okay, someone sent a chat. Hmm. So, someone, someone sent substitution. Mm. Uh, 
yes, we could solve for substitution, but there's even faster way to do it, which would be elimination. Uh, so let's let's look at here. We have eighty minus AC over two. Well, we can split this into eighty over two minus AC over two. And now uh, this becomes pretty clear how we can address this because we said Q is equal to AC over two. So what we do now is we can subtract these two equations from each other. So if we, I mean, uh, add these two equations together because we have a negative here and a positive here. So let's write P plus Q. P plus Q is equal to, uh, I'm gonna rewrite this P. 40 minus AC over two. Okay, so P plus Q is equal to P, which is 40 minus AC over two. And then plus Q, and Q is AC over two. And now we have a minus AC over two plus AC over two, we can cancel this out. And that just gives us P plus Q is equal to 40. Uh, yeah, and let me check chat. Someone says, will we get recordings of the meetings? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm recording all of these. I'll probably send them out after this, uh, after this week is over. Mm -hmm. So does everyone understand uh, this question? Uh, how we managed to solve this from P and Q? Uh, because here, uh, when you have this thing, this 80 minus AC over two, and then you have an AC over two, this should scream at you that elimination, because if you see this AC over two here, and you have another AC over two, and chances are they're gonna cancel out. And uh, another hint, if you didn't notice this, would be that it says the sum of angles P and Q, that's what they're asking for. And then if you wanted to try adding these two, like let's say, let's try to add P and Q, you'd notice that you have AC over two here and then 80 minus AC over two here. So it becomes a little more obvious if you do it that way. Oh, so you got eight, um, 40 by dividing 80 by two? Yeah, because we split uh, 80 minus AC over two was 80 over two minus AC over two. So we're just taking apart the two terms inside of a fraction. Oh, okay. I get it now. Okay, so someone asked, uh, give me one second here. Okay. So now here's a, less intuitive thing we can find from an angle formed by a tangent and a chord. So the angle is one half of the arc that it cuts off. So that doesn't, it's kind of hard to understand without looking at this diagram here. But we have this angle, this angle ABC here is equal to theta, which is this huge arc divided by two. So like if you have a, if we have a angle here, we have a, so if we have a tangent here, this tangent line is here is on the bottom. And then there's a line cutting through the circle here. The angle from the tangent to the, to this line is half of the arc that it cuts off. So let's just do a quick example. Uh, given that, uh, let's say, let's get this. Given that ABC equals 60 degrees, and BCD is 70 degrees, and they're labeled here. Uh, what is the measure of CBD? Well, let's look at the equation we just learned. We learned that uh, the, the angle here, ABC here, is half of the arc that it cuts off. So the arc that it cuts off here is relatively small. It's just from here to here because when you extend this line, it goes here and it cuts off from C arc CB basically. 
So CB should be twice of this angle here. So CB is 120 degrees. So after we know this, we think about something we learned earlier, which was the inscribed angle. And you notice that arc BC, this arc, uh, arc BC here, uh, it's in, uh, it connects to this D angle here. And D should be one half of this. So D is 60 degrees. So now we have a triangle and we know two of the, we know two of the angle measures, uh, but then we can just solve for this unknown here. So we have X plus, X plus 70 plus 60 equals 180. X is equal to 50. Wait, I mean, yeah, okay, X equals 50. So this is, that's just an example of how we used multiple rules we just learned uh, at the same time here. Okay, so here's another set of angles, rules we can learn. Uh, the angle formed by two cores is one half of the intercepted arcs. So basically what this means is that uh, this angle here, which is the same as this angle here, because they're vertical, uh, the angle formed by these two cords, which are these, which is theta here, is one half of the sum of the intercepted arcs. So those are the arcs on the outside. So that's this arc and this arc. So we're saying theta is a, which a plus, uh, not a, alpha plus beta over two. So let's just do an example to show. Okay. So if arc AB is equal to 60 degrees, DE is equal to 40 degrees. What is uh, arc ACD? So they want this. Well, we, we can't directly find this angle, but what we, do, uh, what we can find are uh, these angles because they're the angles formed by these two. And using the equation we just learned, we have those angles. Let's call this angle X. These are both X because they're vertical. We have x is equal to 40 plus 60 over 2, 50. And then after we know that x is 50, you'll notice that the angle we're looking for, which is angle ACD, is supplementary to these x's. So then we have uh, angle ACD is equal, uh, oops, plus uh, x is equal to 180. Uh, X is 50. So then angle ACD is equal to 130 degrees. This is 130. Okay, so that's just an application of what we just learned. Let's, let's do some practice here. Segments PA and PT are tangent to the circle. Find the measure of TXA. So have this, want this one. If angle P is equal to 42 degrees. So anyone have an idea? Let's see. Instead of question mark, let's call this let's call this uh, let's call this angle theta. So if this is theta, what does that make this arc TA? 
Does anyone remember? Described arc. Well, uh, if you, uh, as we learned earlier, uh, this uh, out this arc should be double of the inner arc. So this would be two theta. I know it's probably hard to remember all of these since learning them all of a sudden. So I'll, I'll try to point you guys in the correct direction. So now there's another formula that we learned earlier regarding uh, regarding two lines that are touching a circle, which we have PT and PA touching a circle here. So if you remember, which probably don't, but <laughs> here we have this arc here, and then we have, let's say we have this arc here. So the relation between the red arc in the yellow arc and angle P states that, uh, states that P is equal to, I just label it arc T X A minus arc uh, T A over two. So that's the one, uh, it was like the outer arc minus the inner arc divided by two. So that's our equation here. So let's use some of our defined variables here. So TXA, which was the red arc, well, that would be uh, 360. I'll write this down, TXA. It's, it's the full circle subtracted from the yellow part. And the yellow part, TA, that, that's uh, two theta as we defined it. So it's 360 degrees minus two theta. And then arc TA is just two theta. It's the yellow part. So I should, uh, uh, just to clarify, to make sure we see where it's coming from, arc TXA, uh, which is the red one, and arc TA should add up to 360 degrees because it forms a whole circle. So, okay, so then we're going to see what can we do here. Well, let's try substituting it in. We have TXA, 360 degrees, uh, minus 2 theta, uh, and then we have subtract TA, which is two theta over two is equal to P. And now they give us P, it's very convenient. So then we have, I'll rewrite it over here. 42 is equal to 360 degrees. Uh, it says minus two theta minus two theta that makes minus four theta over two. Now we can try to just solve this equation. Multiply both sides by two, 84 equals 360 degrees minus four theta. Four theta is equal to uh, 360 minus 84 which should be uh, 200 and uh, 276, and that gives us theta is equal to 40, 40. Oh, my mental math is faltering here. 276 divided by four is, sorry, it's 69. Wait, then what about the um, dividing, by, uh, dividing by two? Oh, uh, to get rid of the dividing by two, what I did was I multiplied both sides by two. So this 42 became an 84 here. You see? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. 
Good question. Um, okay, so. Oh, well, this one's this one's pretty difficult. So I'm I'm gonna do this one and see if you guys can try to follow along the steps I'm taking here. And then if you have any questions, just stop me. So let's look at this this pretty intimidating figure here. So we have PC is tangent to the circle, and uh, PD bisects uh, CPE. So what that means is that you have angle CPE here. If it bisects it, that means it cuts it into half equally. So this angle and this angle are the same. Okay, so CD is equal to 70 degrees. It's labeled. Arc DE is 50 degrees. It's also labeled. And angle uh, DQE, which is this angle here, is equal to 40 degrees. And they want the measure of arc AE that does not include C. So that's just going to be, let me change. That. They just want this arc right here. So when I look at this problem, I'm going to think, okay, so which which one of the principles, uh, which one of the principles that we learned can we apply? So let's. Let's set some let's set some variables here. So let's call this angle uh, CPB. Let's call this let's call this on um, alpha or something. We have to use Greek because they already use regular letters. We have alpha here, so this is also alpha because there's a bisector. So what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna talk about the inner minus the outer minus inner ones. So if you remember the equation, this outer line, because we have this, uh, let me just draw this. We have this line here, and then we have this line here that are both leading to the same point. It looks, so then we can try to apply the principle of the outer arc minus the inner arc divided by two. So I'm gonna say 70 degrees minus arc CB, which is this one. We don't know what it is yet. So we're just going to write CB minus arc CB divided by two is equal to alpha. And then we're going to do the same with the other alpha. We're going to say 50 degrees minus arc, this time will be this one here, will be arc BA over two is also equal to alpha. Is everyone following so far? Yeah. Okay. So now let's look at what other information they gave us. So they so they gave us this uh, this forty degrees here, and uh, that means that this angle by vertical angles is also going to be well 40 degrees so uh, using another principle we learned remember when we have uh, let me draw in the corner so then we have like intersecting lines intersecting chords like this we have uh, the two outer angles multiplied is uh, divided by two is equal to the inner angles so that means that 50 plus, uh, did I say multiply earlier? I meant plus, uh, adding them. I was gonna say 50 plus uh, arc BC over two is equal to 40 degrees. This was one of the equations that we learned earlier. So now we can rewrite this and solve for BC. We multiply both sides by two, plus BC, and then that gives us BC is equal to 30 degrees. So that tells us this angle here is 30 degrees. But I thought you were adding 50. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we had 50 plus BC here is equal to uh, 80. 
And then to get rid of, to get the BC by itself, we subtract 50 from both sides. So then we have 50 minus 50, which uh, cancels out the 50s. Then we have 80 minus 50, which gives us uh, 30. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm, yeah, so after we find BC, we can start solving this problem because we have this equation up here, which we did earlier which said 70 minus uh, CV over 2 equals alpha. And of course, CB is the same thing as uh, BC. Just switching the order of which you're calling the points on the arc. So let's write this as 70, 70 degrees minus 30 degrees over 2 is equal to alpha. So that's 40 over 2. So alpha is equal to uh, 20 degrees. So then this is 20 degrees here. And then that means this angle, remember it was a bisector, this is also 20 degrees. So then that plugs it into this equation. We have 50 minus BA over two is equal to 20 degrees. Now we have to solve for BA. This leads us to 50 minus BA, is equal to 40 degrees. Negative A is equal to negative 10 degrees. So A is 10 degrees. Uh, why did I start writing A? I meant BA, sorry about that. Minus BA. So that means this arc here is 10 degrees. So why did I write 10 squared? <laughs> 10 degrees. Okay. And then now finish this problem. Uh, we're looking for AE, just over here. So does anyone have an idea of how we can find AE for our final step? For a hint, it's not any of the equations that I went over earlier. Well, basically what we do here is you notice that, remember that each circle has 360 degrees. So you notice we know this, we know this, we know this, we know this. We know all of these and we're trying to find the last part. So we just say 360 degrees is 10 degrees plus 30 degrees plus 70 degrees plus 50 degrees. Then you have to subtract all of that from 360. Yeah. So X is equal to 360 minus, if you add this up, you'll get, uh, you'll get 160. So X is 200 degrees. And that is our answer here. So A to E is 200 degrees? Uh, yeah. A to E here is, oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, A to E there is 200 degrees. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. The drawing doesn't look very good. It, I don't think it's drawn to scale, but uh, algebraically, it has to be 200 degrees. Okay. Let's talk about... Uh, what time is it? 32? Okay, we can do this. So there's this interesting theorem called a power of a point theorem. Uh, and this is when we stop talking about angles and start talking about lengths. So it states that given point P and a line which intersects in the, uh, intersects the circle at another point or two points, uh, the product of the inner times the outer will always be the same. So what that means is this, this PB here times PA is the same as this PB here times this PA, which is the same as this PB times this PA. And then for this tangent line, it's uh, equal to this times itself because, well, there's no inner or outer. Well, let's just, it's just a preview. Let's try to, 
try to uh, express this more explicitly. So it tells us that two tangents uh, from the same point to a circle, uh, I mean, from the same point to a circle are always the same. So if you have a point here, then you draw the two tangents, which means the two points that touch the circle. Uh, these two lengths will always be the same. And uh, the, the reason is, is by the formula, you have AC squared is equal to BA squared. Well, if their squares are the same, they must be the same in this scenario. So AB is equal to AC. Now this one is saying, given tangent AC and secant AD as shown, we have AC squared is equal to AB times AD. So what it's saying is that this length here, this, this X here, and then we have Y here from A to B and B here from A to D. It's just saying X squared is equal to Y times Z. So it's just, uh, this, this outer line square is equal to this short line times the total line. And uh, it might seem like memorization right now, but you should get the hang of these problems. Let's do a short example here. See if anyone remembers what we just learned. So from given tangent AC and secant uh, AB, with AC equals six, AD equals four, and uh, BD equals X, find the value of X. So we can set up an equation here. So does anyone want to take a shot at it? I'll go, I can go back here. Take a look at this equation. AC squared equals AB times AD. Then go back here. So what equation can we set up here? So I guess I'll just do it then. So we can say that AC squared equals to AD times, well, that's a really ugly D, AD times AB. So that tells us 36 is equal to four times AB, which is this total length here, which is four plus X. Then we can just solve this equation by both sides by four x equals five. That's just an application of the equation. Wait, no. so what did you do? Okay, uh, let me go back. So what we said is, let me draw this. We said this length here, CA, we said CA squared is equal to basically the outer length, this outer length here, times the total length, AB. So it, that'd be AD times AB. And that's just, that's just a formula we just learned earlier. That's not something you can figure out if you don't know. So then we just substitute in our values here. We have uh, AC, I tell you it's six. So six squared is 36 is equal to AD times AB. Well, AD is four, that's given. And then uh, for AB, uh, that's gonna be AD plus DB. So AD we said was four and then DB is X. And then we just solve this equation for x. So you divide both sides by four. And you should get this. Four, uh, nine equals four plus x. Then you subtract four to get x that's equal to five. Okay, I got it. Okay, so if you 
here's another equation here. They're saying, given secants, which are lines that cut through a circle, AC and uh, AE as shown, we have AB times AC is equal to AD times AE. So this is again saying outer times total is equal to this outer line times uh, the total. So that's such an ugly drawing, sorry. But it's best shown through an example. Let's include the picture, dang it. It's time for me to draw. So a point P is outside a circle and is uh, 13 inches from the center. So let's draw a circle over here. Okay, good enough. It's the distance here from P to the circle is 13. Uh, a secant from P cuts the circle at Q and R. So let's draw a secant that cuts through the circle. So like, so it cuts through the circle at two points, right? Q and R. So that the external segment, which is PQ here, PQ here is nine inches and QR here is seven inches and then they ask you to find uh, they ask you to find the radius of the circle well the key here is uh, remember the line we drew here from p to, q, p to the center was 13 let's extend that line so it looks a little more like what we just saw earlier uh, which was this uh, thing it looks a little more similar right we have a point here at the end and then we have two lines cutting through the circle so uh, and do this so then uh, now we can try to set up the equation so remember the equation was that outside over total is equal to while well, the other outside over the total so let's look at the bottom line, which is the non, the solid line, which is uh, PR. Well, the outside of the part of PR outside the circle is PQ and PQ. Well, let's just write PQ for now, over total PR. This is equal to the outside of this line, which is, let's call this point, uh, let's call it A or something. So let's call it PA. Then let's call the total length from P all the way over here. Let's call it B over PB. So these are all lengths. So let's plug in some known values here. A PQ, uh, they tell us that this length here is nine. So let's say nine. Uh, P, uh, P uh, R here would be nine plus QR, which is seven. So then nine plus seven, nine plus seven, which is nine over 16. And then let's look at what we have here. So PA, so remember that this length here is, is 13, yeah. So PA here, which is from here to here, well, that's just going to be 13 minus from point A to the center. So point A to the center, if you notice, it's a radius. So then we're going to, the radius, so we'll just call it R again. So then PA is going to be 13 minus R. Does everyone see this? Yep. Okay. And then now we want to represent uh, PB. So does anyone have an idea of how we can try to express PB using the information we have? I'll give you the first part is 13. So 
So wait, how did you get 13 again? That's given in the problem. It just tells you it's 13 inches from the center. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't do any math for that. <laughs> yeah, so this line here is 13. So then what does that make PB, this total length, algebraically speaking? Give it another. You have to add something. Would it be 22? Uh, it's not numerical. It's going to be 13 plus something. Now something, uh, let me switch to a drawing tool. 13 plus B. P, um, can we make like the middle point 13 point like a X or something? And then say it's P plus X plus X plus B. Yeah. So let me, I switched off the drawing tool. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so let's call this X. You said it's 13 plus X plus B, right? 13 plus X plus B. Yeah. Yeah, so what do you notice about X and B? They are, um, or I should say, what do you notice about the line XB, this line here, from X to B? Are they a radius? Yeah. So XB is actually just a radius of a circle, because it goes from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle. So we can rewrite PB as 13 plus R. So I need to, this is important. We all understand where this is coming from. So we're saying p to the x, uh, from p to x, which is the center of the circle, that length is 13, that's given. And then we have this additional length from x to b, because we extended the line. And since x is the center and b is the outside of the circle, that makes uh, this line xb here, that makes it a radius. So does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I don't, I don't, sometimes I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense. So if I actually am talking nonsense, you guys can call me out. <laughs> All right, so then we have this equation here, and they want the radius. Then we're going to solve this by doing some cross multiplying. So we say 9 times 13 plus r is equal to 16 times 13 minus r. Uh, so we can. Uh, multiply this out. I'm just going to do the math here. 13 times 9 is 117 plus 9r. So as we're distributing here is equal to 13 times 16, which is 208 uh, minus 16r, which is there. So we're going to add 16r to both sides. So we have 25r. And let's subtract 117 from both sides. So we have 28 minus 117, which is equal to uh, 91. And then we have 25R is 91. So that leaves us with, I'm running out of space here. And it leaves us with R is equal to 91 over 25. This is another long problem. Does everyone understand? how we got there, or is there a part that I should review? Wait, so how'd you get 25 again? Uh, so uh, that comes from this, we have a 9R here, and a negative 16R here. So I added 16R to both sides, and then 9 plus 16 is 25. Then where'd the 91 come from? Well, the 91 comes from the, because we have a 208 over here. We have a 117 over here. So I subtracted 117 from both sides. So uh, uh, 208 okay. minus 117, and that gives us our 91. I got it. Okay. Thanks for asking. Yeah, I skipped some steps when doing algebra. It's not a good habit.
Okay, so give a, maybe one or two more equations left. Okay, this one's fairly easy to remember. Given two chords, uh, BC and uh, DE, which intersect at a point A here, we have BA times AC is equal to DA times AE. So basically what it's saying is like the two parts that make up a chord, like this part and this part, when you multiply them, uh, it's the same as multiplying the two parts of the other chord. So it's the same as multiplying like this and this. So it's basically, so it's like, you, when you have two chords that intersect and they get split into two parts, the product of the two parts for each of the lines is gonna be the same. So just do a example here. Oops, I need a, so this is, a, this is another tough one. So I think I'm gonna maybe walk through most of it. And this will be the last slide of the meeting. So let me clear what we have. So in the diagram, we have EB. EB bisects uh, CD. So what this means is this line CD here, if it bisects it, it cuts into half evenly. So this line here from C to F is equal to the line from F to E. So these are the same. So, and then C is also the midpoint of uh, AD. So this total line here, this length here, well, I should change colors probably. This line here is the same length as uh, this length here. So, yeah, so now they want us to find, uh, they want us to find GB, so this, this line here. Uh, given uh, AB is equal to 16, so this length, this total length here, that should hint at something we have to do later. Is 16, uh, EF is here. four. Yeah, and FB here, I'll label it, is six. So let's, let's go back and Actually, let's think about the equation we just learned. When you have a chord, it's cut into two pieces. The product of the two pieces will be the same. So do we have two pieces here of a chord? Uh, with known values? Does anyone see a chord here that's... We, we also have, we basically have E and E B because all you have to do is add four and six together. Yeah, exactly. So this chord E B here, we already know uh, the lengths here. So the equation we just learned was that the parts of a chord, when you multiply them, they're gonna they're gonna come up with the same number. So what we're gonna say is six times four is equal to CF times FD. And this is, this is the equation we just learned, right? So we have the parts of the chord. When you multiply them, they're the same thing. Well, if, uh, if you guys remember, uh, CF and FD uh, are actually the same because uh, this line here, EB, it's bisecting it, which means bisecting just means dividing in half evenly. So what we have is, Let's say six times four is equal to, let's just choose CF. CF is the same as FD. So we can write CF times CF. So 24 is equal to CF squared. And then we take the square root of 24 is equal to CF, which is also equal to FD. And if we want to simplify square root of 24, we can rewrite it because the square root of four is uh, two. Wait, so. because it's CF squared, shouldn't it be divided by two because it's squared? Or are uh, we talking about like C to D? 
Mm, okay, so the reason uh, we're not multiplying by two here, we have, let me draw in different color. So the equation says this part times this part is, is gonna be the same as uh, this part times this part. So we're saying CF times FD uh, will result in 24. And when you're multiplying CF times FD, well, CF and FD are the same. So it's CF times CF. So then you have CF squared. And if you want to undo a squared, you don't divide it by two. You have to take the square root. So in, we don't divide 24 by two here. We take the square root of 24, which uh, simplifies to two root six. And the reason for that is square root of 24, put it into the square root of four times the square root of uh, six, is equal to two times the square root of six. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. All right. Thanks for asking for clarification, because, yeah, I don't know if I'm making sense once again. So after we have this length, CF here, they, uh, let's see, what, what, what else do we have? So we know that uh, C here, this point C here, is the midpoint of a D. So it means that AD is twice CD. Well, let's, let's, let's do CD first, right? CD is equal to CF plus FD, which is equal to, well, 2 root 6 plus 2 root 6, which is equal to 4 root 6. Well, uh, okay, so after we have this, there was another equation from earlier. You guys might not remember, but it was the outer section times the total is equal to the outer section times the total. And well, now we know a lot of values, so we can try to solve this. And I'll write it at the top here. I'll say AG, that's the outer section, times the total, which is AB is equal to. AC times AD, where AC is the outer section, AD is the total. So, well, AG is, uh, AG is gonna be something uh, we don't know yet. So we'll leave it as AG. Uh, and then AB, we also do not know yet. So, but you'll notice that AB is equal to AG plus GB. So let's leave it at that for now. How but do we do? AB is 16 in the question. You're right. You're completely right. So we don't have to do that at all. We can just write 16. Thanks for catching that. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we'll just write AG times 16. And then uh, on the other side, we have AC times AD. Well, we know what AC is. Uh, AC is going to be the same as CD, which is 4 root 6. AD, uh, well, it also tells you that C is the midpoint of AD. So then it's going to be twice, it's going to be twice of CD. So then it's going to be 8 root 6, which is twice of 4 root 6. So let's just try to solve this. AG times 16 is equal Wait, to... Wait, so why are you multiplying it by 2? Okay. Uh, so let me choose another color again. So we know this value here, CD, right? We solved for that. We said it was 4 root 6. And then... Uh, it tells you in the problem, C is the midpoint of AD. So this is halfway in between A and D. So that means that uh, the distance from C to D is the same as the distance from A to C because it's exactly in the middle. So if you want the to total distance, uh, I just multiplied by two there. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. 
So yeah, uh, after we do this, we can multiply four root four times root six times eight times root six. So that'll give us thirty-two times six. Then that gives us a g is equal to twelve. So this length here, a g is twelve, and then now we can finally finish the problem because, well, they ask for g b. And they give us the total length, right? So 12 plus GB is equal to 16. And that gives us GB is equal to 4. Yeah, and that is the end of the problem. Yay. Yeah, so this is a pretty lengthy problem. So you guys are still super young, probably. Uh, you won't be able to figure this out immediately, but if you're just able to understand the process of getting there, you're already ahead of where I was at your guys' age. So yeah, that, that'll be it for today. Uh, oops, let's escape here. So that wraps up today's session. Um, uh, uh, can't, where is the, do you know where the, um? The slide for the systems of equations is. Oh, uh, you said you couldn't uh, sign in, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I signed in, but like it said, it's, request for access. Uh, that's strange. It's probably if you're signed into your school account, that that could be an issue. So if you signed out of your school account, you could probably open it. But if that doesn't work, uh, it's just email me or email Ananya and then I can uh, send you a yeah. PDF instead. Uh, it was signed in my sister's school account. Yeah, the school accounts are a problem. They cause permission issues. But yeah, and I'll, I'll share these slides too because, well, there's a lot of equations and it's probably good to have a reference if you guys want to ever review them. So I'll stop share. And I'll Thank stop. You.